Would you mind if we talked for a while? Oh, would you, would you, would you mind if I asked you to stay? Oh, would you mind, would you mind if I asked you to lay with me? Oh, would you, would you mind, somebody, tell me the name of that song. <laughs> What's up, y'all? This is Ty. I am here to review season four, episode four of The Shy. And tonight's episode is titled The Girl from Chicago. And that song that I was just singing, I don't know the name of it, but it was in tonight's episode. It was at in tonight's episode, that scene where um, Tiffany was over there with Dante, and I was like, dang, that song is dope. So I was trying to figure out, anybody know, leave it down in the comment section. I tried to Google it. I tried to use Shazam it. I asked everybody. I asked Siri. I asked Alexa. Who played? <laughs> I did everything, and I still could not find out who sang that song. And I, I, I waited to the end of the credits and everything, and I couldn't find it out. But anyway, I'm here to review this episode. Shout outs to my people holding me down in the comment section. You wonderful people know who you are. June BLC, Jeremy Crawford, Lamont Simpson, um, Savannah, Patricia Longcrier, Simply Be Yourself 100, Atif, Penny, all the rest. Shout outs to my new subscribers, Alexis and Jeremy Crawford. Just subscribe. So thank you for subscribing. And yo, you too. Come on, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Engage with a brother. Let's keep this channel going, going, going. With that being said, let's get right down to tonight's episode. So it kicks off the opening scene. We see Emmett and his wife. You know, they agreed to this whole open marriage thing. And, you know, some things sound a little fun that they don't really turn out to be that fun. Because, you see, they she's doing it with Dante. He got some chick over at the house. He getting some, you know, getting some play going. But he doesn't seem to be into it. He seems to be distracted. And you know why? Because Emmett is not really feeling this. Because, you know, he's not really feeling the fact that his girl is messing with this dude Dante and she's like kind of like giving a lot of attention to this dude so he even says to her in one of their conversations like you know you, you mess with Dante I need you to stop messing with Dante because they're like they there's some rules to this open marriage thing apparently she doesn't like that he slept with somebody that she used to work with that she can't stand she can smell the girl's cheap perfume it's a lot of tension between the two of them with this. I knew this wasn't going to work. This doesn't work with certain people. You got to, it's, I don't think I could do that open marriage thing either. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, he's not feeling this. I knew this was going to go. I just had a feeling this was not going to work for them because she's enjoying herself with Dante. And I think this has bruised, <laughs> this has bruised. Emmett's ego because he's like, you know, you you paying a lot of attention to him. He even said, you know, he's off limits. You should go with someone else. She's like, well, wait a minute. So you want me to spread it around to other dudes? I'm, I'm cheating on you. Or I'm messing around on you with one dude. You want me to spread it around? And he had to think about that, too. See, this is a conflict here because this is not really what he wants. This is not really what he wants. But like she said, listen. You put me in this position, so I'm trying to make this work. I don't see this working for them. I see this as, I just don't see it working, especially Emmett. Emmett cannot handle this, and I think he's getting a little, he's jealous now. He can't handle this. He definitely cannot handle this. He, he's not, he's not feeling that. All right, moving right along. In that same episode, we see that uh, Tracy, she just got through since we on the open marriages, she just got through banging out the mayor who is married and she's trying to tip on out and his wife played by Candy. What's her name? Rosalind or something like that. She's like, um, I can't let you leave. I'm not trying to hold you hostage. But apparently there's protesters for Blue Lives Matter outside of the mayor's beautiful apartment outside the apartment building waiting. So she had to sit there and have breakfast with Duda's wife. So that was interesting. We also see in this episode that Kevin is still going through the motions. His mom takes him to a therapist because they're saying that he's not open. I thought that was a really good scene because um, she's saying, you know, he's drinking. He's having all these problems. 
She can't seem to communicate with him. Kevin says he feels smothered and he just, he just, they're like on top of him where his mother basically says, well, it's true. I'm on top of you because look what happened. My daughter was abducted last year. I'm triggered over that. You know, she's pregnant now. She's like, I'm just afraid for my children. And rightfully so. She has that anxiety. So that's why she's kind of like being overbearing and overprotective and smothering and all that good stuff. So I totally get that. I thought that was a great scene right there. Totally get that. Meanwhile, Kevin's having more problems, having problems in his relationship with Gemma. We, we starting to see that shift, that strain. They, they, they drifting apart. They're drifting apart. She's getting more and more cool with um, Jake. As we've seen in last week's episode, um, she had her little talk show. So now this week, she's there's some repercussions from that show because Jake said a lot. And this has triggered some people at the school. And they're saying that him speaking out against the police has caused violence and uh, interruption in the school. And, you know, this is not right. And Jimmy was upset about that because she's like, wait a minute. He got brutalized. Now he speaks about it and you're telling me that he's wrong and we're wrong and this gets her show shut down. But see, you see that bond? They're starting to bond because they have a kind of, they agree on things. So now Jake and Gemma come up with this thing. We're going to have a student protest. We're going to walk out of the school. Kevin ain't feeling that. Kevin's like, listen, I tried to make, I'm trying to make things right with at home with my parents and do right, do what I got to do. I don't think that's a good idea. And he said, besides, I don't have a trust fund. I'm not a trust fund, baby. I ain't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. My daddy can't bail me out and do all these things. Basically, he took a little shot at his girlfriend, Gemma. So there we go. You see more and more of that drift, just drifting away, drifting away as her and Jake get closer, closer. You see what I'm saying? So they're bonding over this thing. So they do have the uh, protest, which was hilarious because... The only three that walked out was J Jake, Gemma, and the white girl. I don't remember, remember her name. They walked out, and that was that. And then so much of a protest that was. So then Jake pulls the alarm. They all leave the school. And now here is where he and Gemma really bond. They start, you know, going, playing hooky all around town. They go into this little restaurant. And she kisses him. And he's like... She, he said, I know what you were thinking. And he said, you, you're probably thinking, why am, I, why am I not your man? Or you wish I was your boyfriend or something like that, he said. And then they kissed some more. And I said, see, look at this. Meanwhile, Kevin is getting ignored. She's been, he's been texting her, trying to reach out to her, trying to get her response. And she's not responding. She's a little annoyed with him at the time. He bought her flowers and everything. He even just got so desperate. He went on Papa's show, made a fool out of himself on Papa's show. <laughs> I thought that was a funny scene, too, because you, you read some of the comments that the people were saying on Papa's show while he, um, Kim and Kevin was live. That was hilarious, too. And he's like trying to. I felt bad for Kevin. I was like, oh, we've been there. Were you trying to get her forgiveness? Meanwhile, she giving it up to your boy. Well, she, you know, she sucking face with your friend. And you over here trying to win her back and apologize, but it ain't working. She getting closer and closer to Jake. And she even says to Jake, what are we going to do from here? What are we going to do? Jake is like, I don't know. She's like, Ugh. she's like, you know, what are we going to do? He said, look, you kissed me. She said, well, you kissed me back. So look, that's that young love, that young confusion. But I'm like, ah, we see each episode. We see how this how Kevin and Gemma's relationship fizzles away. All right, so let's move on down to Keisha. Keisha is interviewing candidates to adopt her baby. And she's like, listen, I'm not just going to give this child to anybody. She wants to make sure she has to fill you out and see what's going on. So we see her interviewing this couple that appear to be a nice couple. They've adopted other children. Um... And the more they speak, like my father always said, you want to know about a person, sit back, shut up and let them speak. And that's what happened here, because as they were leaving, the guy said something like, oh, you're doing God's work. And Keisha said, what do you mean by that? We mean God's work. And he said, oh, you didn't decide to abort your child. And that turned her off because then they, you know, they coming off like they're a bunch of holy rollers. And she's like, oh, see, nah, nah, you're not getting my child. And that. 
makes her decide to go back to the character played by Tabitha Brown. And she goes to that woman's job and uh, has a conversation with her. And she's, you know, gets to fill her out some. She sees that she has this great job. She asks the secretary about her. The secretary says, oh, she's a nice woman. She paid for my mama's funeral when my father got laid off. And you know, so when Keisha goes and has this conversation with her, she says, how do you see me? Describe how you would see me because she's showing like she's some sort of architect. She's showing things that she's created. She said, what would you call me? And she said, I would call you a strong, you know, if, I, if you were a building, you would be strong and indestructible and no storm could take you down and things like that. So she's bonding with Keisha. And while she does that, what happens? It seems like she's going into labor. So then we fast forward, she's in the hospital and the doctor, he's like, oh, we got to induce labor. You know, a lot of these doctors, not all, but a lot of them just be trying to get you in and out, want to do things real quick. And she's like, tap with this character. It's like, no, 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 we need to wait. This could be, this might not even be the time. Why are we going to do this? Because he's just saying, rush it. You need to get a second opinion. Meanwhile, uh, Keisha's mom is like, oh, you know, what are we going to do? She's looking for Dre. She's trying to figure out what's going on. Meanwhile, Dre is over with Jada because Jada is having her doctor's appointments because she's struggling with this cancer, which it just crushes me knowing that Jada has cancer. And it's like, oh, man, who's writing this stuff? It's just, but, you know, that's what you call good television when you start feeling it for the characters like they're real people. But now... We find out that this this whole thing of um, inducing the labor, they don't have to do that when uh, she tells Keisha, listen, drink some water and let's see what happens. Keisha drinks water, realizes, you know, this pressure goes down. She doesn't have to be, the labor doesn't have to be induced. And guess what? She decides, you know what, ma'am? You are the right person. I can feel it in my gut. You can have my child. So that that's what she decided is going to have a child. Moving right along, let's move on to the issues uh, with Imani and the girl in the whole house. Is it a whole house? The, the trap house. I'm sorry. The trap house, not the whole house. Whole house, trap house. But the girl that she's trying to help, that Nook uh, is in control of. And Imani gives the girl a phone and tells the girl, you're going to leave at this time and this, that. The girl never shows up. Amani's pissed off. She even goes to Tracy saying he's supposed to be helping the neighborhood. How come you can't get rid of this damn trap house over here? While she's saying that, Triggs comes over and he's trying to speak with her. And she blasts off on Trigg as well. Then we see Trigg confront Nook and ask him where's this girl at. And Triggs, uh, Nook's boys pull out guns on Trigg. Trigg's like, I ain't afraid to die. And sadly, we find out that the girl was killed. And that was really sad. So, you know, Imani could not save this girl. Couldn't save the girl. The girl was killed. Really sad stuff right there. Um, let's talk about this relationship between Maya Duda and Tracy real quick. I don't know where this thing is going right here. They, they seem more lovey-dovey. And, you know, they're, oh, you're using me. Oh, you're using me. I don't know about this. Something's... That's not going to go well. I don't. I have a feeling that that whole situation with them is not going to go well. Right now, she's feeling like a, she's acting like she's just head over heels and enjoying all this stuff because I guess he's helping her with her mission and all those things and treating her like treat her like a lady. He's treating her like a lady, but something ain't right with that whole situation. I I don't know. That's that's not going to go over well. I just don't think it's going to go over well. And then lastly. Let's talk about Emmett and his mom. I thought that was a funny scene when Emmett went over <laughs> to his mother's house and he saw the masseuse there. And he's like, listen, you here. Let me tell you something. Where my mother at? You giving her that much dick that she tired now? What's going on? <laughs> Emmett is ignorant. He said that right in front of his son. He's like, you dicking her down that much that she just tired? What's going on? Where my mother at? So then he sees Jada in the bathroom she's at the toilet or whatever and he's like you pregnant I, i'm like emmett come on dude you think your mother's pregnant <laughs> and then she tells him i have cancer and then he just looks crushed he looks totally crushed and i'm like wow that that was just 
that was sad right there. And we see him being comforted by his wife later. I guess when he shares, he's going to tell her what happened right there. And then we fast forward back to, um, let's go to Kevin's mom, who's in the bed with Dre. And the phone goes off and she sees the text that says, thanks for keeping our secret. And she's like, hmm. Now I'm wondering, I hope she's not thinking that Jada is messing with her, her woman. I hope that's not what she's thinking. I'm, I'm wondering, she's like, well, what is this secret? She's probably going to want to know. But overall, she's probably going to want to know. But overall, I thought it was a really good episode. We getting, we didn't have any of uh, Jason Weaver tonight. I guess they're going to pick that up next week's episode. And like I said, y'all, somebody find that song for me. That song is dope. I love that song. I thought that song was really good. That play, they've been playing some good music in this show. In this show, that, I mean, I just, but I looked at the end credits. I didn't see it. I tried to Google it. I couldn't find it. So if anybody finds it, put it down in the comment section because I enjoyed that song. And I thought tonight's episode was really good. That's all I got. If it's something I missed, y'all, y'all leave it down in the comment section. We could discuss it there. Thank you for watching. That's all I got. It was a good episode. I will see you all in the next video. All right. You all be blessed.